Next up, we have Implicure, and here to present the company is CEO Turbjorn Larsson. Welcome, Turbjorn. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Well, let's start with some legal reading here. And since I know you're all fast readers and we're on the clock, we're moving on. We are an innovative pharmaceutical and consumer product development company, and we develop products on our proprietary bioceramic platforms where we combine molecules which are existing and proven. We are targeting product categories with multi-billion dollar value and we're targeting segments which are growing and where we can make a difference with our products. Empicure was founded by innovators and inventors coming from the life sciences and the material sciences. And the Empicure was listed on First North last year. So what do we do? Well, one of the absolute key strengths of the company is that we can tailor the release profile of the product. We do that through our platforms, and the platforms are going to talk a little bit more about that. The platform set that we combined by ceramics, we combined the substance where it's an API for a pharmaceutical or another substance. And we use also excipients or bulk material to create the right formulation. Then we add a liquid, whether it be water or something else. Everything is com mixed homogeneously. It's cured in the low temperature, barely above room temperature to create these functions. So if you go into this body and look a little bit more deep into it, we can see that the material is porous. And depending upon which bioceramic we have been using, which excipient, and which liquid. We can design and tailor the size of the pores, whether they be small, large, how many, or how few in the material. We can also coat and line the inner walls of the pores to create different release settings. And the beauty of this is that some drugs, products, medicines, you want to have an immediate release, high peak right away and then it dies. We can create long extended releases, a couple hours, up to weeks. We can do this even by having the pH as a trigger. Let's say you have something that you swallow, the substance is supposed to go active in a certain place in your stomach. By the pH, we can do that. The materials we use are biocompatible and they are safe. And looking at the manufacturing, it's a cost-effective and easy scalable manufacturing. I talked about platforms. So today we have developed three platforms, one for oral use, one for transdermal, and one for inhalation use. And we use these platforms for the pharmaceutical products and also for the consumer products. The pharmaceutical products are being developed in Amplicure and the Consumer products are being developed in the subsidiary Amplicon. And as you can see on the screen, there is a number of projects going on on all these platforms. And today, we're going to focus on the two highlighted ones, Ampli03 and Amp01. Just to give you some background data, <clears throat> excuse me, during the 1990s in the US, Doctors, pharmaceutical companies pushed the opioids and started prescribing more and more opioids and with a data that they were non-addictive or very low addictivity for the user. However, today we know much more. They were highly addictive. So today there is an opioid epidemic in the US. It is so big that the American FDA the authorities are encouraging companies to bring on new products with properties that can mitigate the risk of misusing these opioid products. Just to give you some numbers, in 2020 in the US, more than 9 million people were misusing prescribed painkillers. 
not using, misusing. That's almost like everyone in Sweden would be misusing them. Some other background. Last year, these were big news in the US. 100,000 dead in drug overdose one year. Looking at that from a Swedish perspective, that's like wiping out Södertälje, Gävle or Halmstad. Whole smaller city gone. And if you look at it, we can also see that opioids increased with almost 30% in that year. So this is huge. It's a big problem. And on the dark side of these numbers, it also that every fourth, one out of four dead would be a child or teenager. So this is the gateway to heavy drug abuse. The global population, we're getting older, we have an aging population. We're setting higher standards for what we call quality of life. So in this comes with more for the humanity problems and pains. So one part of the big pain segment is what's called chronic pain. It's a huge part. Looking at that, you see 20% of the US population is affected by chronic pain. What is chronic pain? Well, chronic pain is defined as a pain that lasts three months or longer. And if you calculate those 20% of the US population, that equals to around 67 million people having chronic pain over some time. But it's not only a US problem. I mean, as I said, the global population is aging, so this comes all over. So looking at just a few years from now, the estimation is that the market for opioids used for only chronic pain, that segment is about to be above 5 billion US dollars. But only less than 1.5 have these ADF properties that can mitigate the misuse or the abuse of the product. Let me introduce you to Ampli 3 AmpliCure is targeting chronic pain. We do that with unique properties. Here's a picture of the Ampli 3 the candidate we're developing. You might say, well, looks like an oral tablet, around 8 mils size. What's so unique with that? It's a white one. I will present that. It's actually in the inside. The release profile, one of our absolute strengths, is one of the key features for this product. You see a curve here is going up pretty steep the first half hour. So it has an immediate release to take the edge off the pain for the patient. After that, you have an extremely nice extended curve with a lower dose, very even distributed over time for a couple hours. I even put a flat line on it. So you can see it, it is super well designed. That's the first thing, how the substance comes out. The second key feature of this product is actually these. You remember I was talking about the FDA, the ADF properties, anti-deterrent formulations. What can we do to mitigate that these types of products are misused? The normal types of these products would be misused would be you crush the pill, you snort it. Uh, if it's a patch, you roll it and you smoke it. Or you try to dissolve the pill in different kinds of liquids or dissolvents. You don't put a cross over that. So we have a product which is much more safe. I would make an analogy. Uh, let's say the tablet would be a car. Today there are no cars sold without seat belts, airbags. Cars still go into accidents, but for the driver of the car, the patients, or the uh, passengers, I would say, it creates security and safety, better chance of making it. We do the same on the opioids. We put a seat belt or an airbag into the opioid to make them as safe as possible. Everything can be misused, but we make them 
so difficult to use, it should not be worth the effort of trying to do it. Amplicon, consumer products. Let's move over. We're on the clock here. I'm going to talk about AMP01, which is exactly what you see on the picture. And if you don't really see what it is, so AMP01 is a tobacco-free, dry, oral nicotine pouch. Here we're using the same bioceramic platforms, the oral one, where we can control the release profile. To control, to tailor, to design the product according to how the user and the, want to have it. So you can have a release profile of nicotine in this case, where it can be tailored uh, according to the different differences that are required. And this is a huge market and is growing. And it's growing because more and more people are going away from tobacco. Going away from tobacco, but also trying to stay away from what's heated or inhaled. So the market segment for this is big. So in just a few years, we're coming into a market size of almost 11 billion US. And in the total nicotine size market, it's growing with more than 50% compound per year. Just to give you an overview of that. Amplio 3, the pain, chronic pain candidate. We're going into clinical trial. We have now as going into the uh, clinical documentation phase. There are tons of steps to be taken. Some of them are sequential, as you see. Some of them are concurrent and parallel. I'm not going to describe them all because that would take too much time. But we have had discussions with the Swedish MPA. And after the clinical trial, we're going to also go into the regulatory discussions with the FDA about the route forward. In terms of the uh, ample one, we're developing it from what we did last year was a lot of focusing on the, the formulation of it and uh, setting up external partners and expertise outside Amplicon. And today we are working on the actual release profile and finalizing the proof of concept and also product identity to be able to together with partners go into the, the pre-launch, the test launch, and with marketing and sales activities. However, developing good, innovative products, we still need to be able to capitalize on it. And that's even more important if you're going to make partnerships or license deals on it. The ones on the other side of the deal, the table, want to know what they're getting for their money and want to feel secure in the deal. And I can say, Amplicure Group, we have a, a solid IP for what we do. Today, we have 53 patents, over 53, over seven patent families. And this is also important because we have a pipeline that's growing, and that also needs to be covered by the, uh, the IP we're using. So here you see the two pictures of the, the current projects we discussed. Very quick update. Who owns the company? Well, as I said, we are on the stock exchange, and these are the 10 largest owners. And the top three from the top are also the three founders of the company who still own more than 40% of the shares. We have an extensive experience in the board, and the, actually the two ones on the left, Thomas and Håkan, are two of the founders, and they're still active in the company. Last year, we put together a new management team so we are ready to move forward with the, with the company. So my last slide would be, I would give you a couple of reasons why I think this is a good investment. We have well positioned for licensing deals and in growing markets in multi-billion dollar segments. We have a project portfolio which is backed by solid IP and in key markets. The platforms we use have evident advantages for what they're supposed to do. 
And finally, I would say that the business model we also use, taking projects to income and doing that so with less risk, less cost, makes us a unique and attractive partner. Thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation, uh, Torbjörn. Thank you, Michael. Uh, that's very interesting. Um, well, I wanted to ask you, what is the competitive landscape for Amplicure regarding your products? Mm -hmm. Well, as you saw on the slides, there are huge markets. Um, there are a lot of competitors, but if you're looking at what we bring to the table, the release profile and the ADF properties in combination, I would say there is not so much actually. If you look at what's out in terms of ADF, it's very limited. So we have a strong position to get to enter these markets. Mm -hmm. um, you also mentioned partnerships. Um, what are some of the challenges uh, regarding partnering uh, with other companies when it comes to dealing with the op opioid treatment? If you could speak a, bit, a little bit about that. <laughs> Head on the nail. Well, opioids, as strong as they are, they are also covered by a lot of regulations. And in the current world we're living in, you don't want to be shipping narcotics or opioids all over because it takes a lot of authorities, restrictions and uh, improvements to be able to ship it. So when we chose the, uh, the partner for the, to the clinical trial, which is a quality and science from the UK, we chose a partner that both will do the manufacturing for the clinical trial and also the actual trial itself to avoid shipping material too much across borders. Mm -hmm. But also because they're good at what they do. And, um, but that was a challenge to find someone who's actually good enough but still work with opioids. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, what is your, uh, are you optimistic about uh, you know, solving this pandemic, uh, this epidemic, I should say. I think I would be uh, putting myself too much, too strong if I said we would be solving it. Sure. But we, we sure, surely, I was going to say something, we would definitely have some means to make it better. Because as I said, putting a seatbelt on a car, putting a seatbelt on an opioid, and preferably, that would be the golden standard. There shouldn't be any opioids mm. without seat belts. So we would do whatever we can to, from our side to mitigate it, the increase of it. Well, thank you so much for answering the questions and thank you for your uh, interesting presentation and we wish you all the best with your upcoming work. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for having me here. Appreciate it.